Hello. Now, for many photographers and videographers out there like me, the big question that is always at the back of their mind is, which lens am I going to buy next? And for me, I need more length. Filth. Now, Sony has their 70 200 f4 and f2.8, but then Tamron, who I'm a big fan of, brought out some details about 70 to 180 f2.8 lens last year and my camera sense started tingling Hi, my name's James Sunderland, and if you've been to my channel before, you'll know this, but if you haven't, I'm a musician, I'm a singer, pianist, I, I've got guitars on the wall, I, I rarely, rarely play them, and I'm a videographer. If you like this video, please like and subscribe, leave a comment below if you agree with me, if you disagree with me, I can always delete them. And this is a video about why I bought the lens that I bought. Now, for my vlogging and video work, there is always one of two lenses on my camera, and they are this one, which is this 2875 f2.8 from Tamron, and this one that's actually on my camera at the moment, which is the 1728 f2.8. And for me, they are my favourite lenses. I love them. They are they're just exactly what I need. And for the price range, you just, yeah, I, I just don't think they can be beaten, if I'm honest. So when Tamron released some information last year about a 70 to 180 f2.8, you could say I was excited. I mean, it would fill the gap that I needed to fill my holy trinity of lenses, as they call it. And the reviews that were coming out right at the start sounded promising. And I was, yeah, I was fully, fully looking forward to getting that lens. I was gonna day one pre-order. And then, the price came out, and I bought this. Sony 70-200 f4. There are five reasons why I bought this lens instead of this lens. The, I mean, you're just gonna have to pretend that this is the 70-180, to because I don't actually have it, in fact. It's a bit better. Anyway, I got this one. So the first reason is focal range. The Sony versions of the lenses that I've got are both f4, unless you go for the G Master, but I would probably have to sell Jarvis to afford one of those. So with a lot of the weddings and events that I film, a lot of the shots are either at night or inside with dim lighting, and I needed some lenses with a large aperture, which is why I went for the Tamrons with the 2.8. Now, one of the pros for the Sony lenses was they had a slightly larger range, so the Tamron 17-28 in the Sony version was a 16-35, which is nice, but in that sort of range you can just move forward or backwards a bit and it wasn't really that big a deal. So the f2.8 was great for the wider lenses but then I was looking for a telephoto lens with a bit more reach and when that couple of mil difference became 20 mil difference that was a big thing because the main thing I was looking for was that reach. Especially since I shoot on the a7 III and the a6600 which is an APS-C body. So that 20 mil with the crop factor would become a 30 mil difference and that's quite a bit. Because one of the best things about having a telephoto lens is the fact that you can just stand out of the way or if you're not allowed to go anywhere near the party you can just stand at a background so would that 2.8 aperture make up for the fact that you've lost 20 mil if you were a portrait photographer maybe yes but for me no and i'll show you why last night when we were taking jarvis for a walk i took both this lens and this lens out with me. We're not pretending that this is the 70 to 180 anymore. Um, just to show you what I mean by that. So I took three photos on F4. I took one at 28, one at 75 F4, and then one at 180. 
I didn't want to do the 200 because it's comparing it to the Tamron, which obviously can't go up to the 200. So if we look at all the photos side by side, even though they're all shot at f4, the difference in the background between 28 and 180 is quite substantial. On the 28 mil, you can see all of the trees in the background. There's still some definition there. Whereas when you get right up to 180, the background is just completely blurred. And would 2.8 make it even more blurred? Yeah, of course. But for me, F4 at that range is absolutely fine. I'm not gonna lose sleep over it. So reason number two is price. When I bought the Tamron lenses, they were either slightly cheaper, like the 2875, I think was about 75 pounds cheaper, or they were hundreds of pounds cheaper, like the 70 to 28. Now this was important to me because I'm a musician first, so I can't go spending all of this money on video stuff because I've got my music to think of. So a big price difference was a big deal. So last year when I was looking at the Sony F4 70-200, I was kind of hoping that Tamron would bring out something cheaper. And when it was released and the price came out, I was a bit disappointed that in America, the pre-order price is $1,200. In England, it's £1,350. Uh, yeah, just, it's, yeah, just annoying. Okay, so I'll admit number three really isn't that much of a deal breaker for me but it's something that was part of my consideration, and that is the lens mount. Now the Sony 70-200 has this lens mount, which comes in really handy, even if it's just somewhere to hold it. But the other good thing about it is that it takes a lot of strain off the actual camera mount, because if you were to attach a tripod with a heavy ass lens onto this bit, it's gonna, it's gonna damage this bit, and I don't really wanna have to pay for that. So this, I like it. Now, if you're a photographer and you wanted to do some portrait shots, but you don't have a tripod on you that can tilt to 90 degrees, this is another thing that's really handy because you can just loosen the mount, turn it to the side a bit, attach it back down, and you're ready to go. Okay, so number four is a big one for me, so hold on to your Image stabilization. Now, the Sony has optical steady shot, and the Tamron just hopes to God that you have a steady hand. Now, having a lens with image stabilization is another thing which value changes with the focal length. It wasn't really a deal breaker for me for the 28 to 75, and even less so with the 17 to 28. Just because of the fact that those focal lengths, you can kind of get away with not having it. Now, if you're walking down a windy beach in the middle of winter, it can look a bit ropey, but usually you'll be all right. And if I really wanted something really smooth and steady, then I've got a gimbal and I can just use that. So again, last night out in the woods, took some video on this with the image stabilization on and then off. Again, this isn't color graded or anything like that. It's just straight out of the camera, straight off the SD card onto this video but you can see the micro jitters when the stabilization is off, is really off-putting. And don't get me wrong, if I was doing professional work or I was doing a wedding or event or something like that and I was using this lens, I would have it on a monopod. If I tried to take a monopod or a tripod on a walk with us or to a national park, then Charlotte would shoot me. So it's nice to know that it can actually get away with not needing one. Now I'm going to admit that number five is quite questionable and preferential and I might have just added it because four reasons doesn't sound as good as five reasons, so... The Sony just looks cool. It's just, it, it does, it looks professional, it looks expensive. I know these are sort of dodge reasons, but if you were to go to a wildlife park, say, and just get your bag out, whip that beast out, people would be looking at you like, yeah, he has many leather bound books and his apartment smells of rich mahogany. 100%, I'm not, I mean, I'm not promising this, but for me, it looks cool. I mean, what probably would happen is that they would just be thinking, <laughs> nerd. But, so yeah, that's, that's number five. So that pretty much just wraps it up. I will say that these are just purely my reasons for buying the Sony. The Sony just seems to fit my needs better than what this Tamron looks like it will. And plus, I didn't really want to wait because 
I'm sure this lens will be sold out for years and I'm guessing it's gonna be an absolutely incredible lens so I'm not dissing it. So if anyone does manage to get this lens, please let me know what you think. Please let me know if I'm completely wrong. I would love that because I'm usually wrong. But these are just my reasons anyway. Just one final note, and this one's addressed to Apple. Please stop autocorrecting this to tampon. Has anyone had any uh, issues with the 17 to 28 tampon 2.8? Just saying.